All right, welcome back. Today we're starting chapter seven notes uh, with an introduction to circles. And now circles are going to be the easiest shape we deal with in this unit because there's not much to them. You know, if I have a circle, I mean, what does the circle really have? Well, a center, uh, you know, so in other words, where do I put the thing? And then a radius, which tells me how big to make my circle. And that's pretty much it. It's just got those two parts. Uh, so there's not a whole lot to circles. Okay. All right, now, like it says here, we all know what a circle looks like, but what about the equation which forms a circle? Well, our equation is going to look like this. Okay, and what does this look like? What do you want to keep in mind for this equation? Well, it's going to have something with x in it, squared, plus, it's always got to be plus or, or else it's a different shape, something with y in it, squared, and it's going to equal some number, which is our radius squared. Okay, now it's already filled in here, but uh, it says our center is h comma k. Okay, let's think about that. This is the x and the y value of my center. Uh, what if I stick in x equals h? If I plug in h here, I get h minus h, and that's going to be 0, no matter what h is. Uh, if I stick in uh, k for my y value, well, then k minus k would also give me 0. So then when you're looking to find your center, how do you do that? Well, you stick in whatever makes your two squared parts equal 0. Now, I say squared parts and not the binomial because it doesn't have to be a binomial. For example, could I have a center at 0 comma 0? Sure. So in other words, h could be 0 and or k could be 0. And if h is 0, what's x minus 0? Well, 0, so it would just be x squared. Or what's y minus 0? Well, just uh, y, so that would be y squared. Um, so sometimes in your equation, you might have just an x squared or just a y squared, but that's still in this form. That just means that the h or the k, or maybe both, uh, equals 0. Okay. And then uh, what's the radius going to be in our circle? Well, the radius is the square root of that r squared part. So whatever number here is here, we want to take the square root of that to get r, which is our radius. Okay. All right, so let's look at a couple examples. Here it says identify the center and radius of each circle. Okay, so remember the center is going to be a point, some x value, comma, some y value. And then again, when you're trying to find the center of the circle, uh, you just want to look at your equation and say, what's going to make the squared part come out zero? What plus six equals zero? Well, negative 6. And what minus 2 equals 0? Well, positive 2. So the center for this circle is at negative 6, comma 2. And then what's my radius? Well, this is my radius squared. So then the radius is going to be the square root of that number. And the square root of 9 is just 3. Okay, so if I wanted to draw this circle, I would uh, plot this center, go out 3 in each direction, and then draw my circle. Okay, what about the next one? This one looks a little different because, again, here's a monomial instead of a binomial. Okay, no big deal. What's going to make this squared part zero? In other words, what squared is zero? Well, zero. So the x value of my center is just zero. And then what plus 13 is zero? Negative 13. So my center for number two is at zero comma negative 13. And then my radius is going to be the square root of 121, which is just 11. Okay, one more of these to go. Uh, number three, what's my center going to be here? So some x value comma some y value. What minus 1 equals 0? Well, positive 1. And then what squared equals 0? Zero? 0. So anytime you see a monomial, whether it's x squared or y squared, that just means that part of your answer is 0. Okay, and then my radius is going to be the square root of that number. What's the square root of 19? Well, I'm not sure. It's just the square root of 19. Okay, so your answers, your, you know, your... Your radius isn't always going to turn out to be a whole number. Uh, it's only going to be that when one of when this number is a perfect square. Okay, so you'll see a lot of examples where it does work out nice, but realistically, it's usually going to be something that's not a perfect square. All right, now they want us to sketch the circle for problem number three. Okay, so we want to sketch the circle with a center at one comma zero, and then a radius at root nineteen. So how do we do that? Well, let's start with the easy part. The center is at one comma zero. So that's going to be right here. And then how do I plot root 19? Okay, now what is the square root of 19? Well, I know the square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of 25 is 5, so it's going to be somewhere between 4 and 5. Do you have to know exactly what it is? Not really, because, I mean, okay, what is it exactly, first of all? If I do, you know, 19, take the square root, okay, it's about 4.358, rounded to the nearest thousand. Am I going to be able to tell the difference between 4.358 and you know about four and a half on this little graph when I put a big dot down there? No, okay, so don't worry about getting the exact number here. Just know that it's between four and five. So you know, when your plotting points go out about four and a half. 
Okay, now can I go out four and a half in every single direction? Well, no, as we learned in our trig unit, there's a lot of angles, right? So I can't go out in every direction. So let's just do the basic direction, directions, up, down, left, and right. So we're going to go up, down, left, and right, you know, root 19, about four and a half. So I'm going to go up four and a half, and down four and a half, right four and a half, and left four and a half. Okay, so we got those four points and then use those as guides to help you draw your circle. Now don't go straight to each point because then you're just going to make like a diamond. Circle should be round. So do your best to make it pretty rounded. Yeah, that's not too bad. So then there's our circle uh, for number three. Okay, all right. Now sometimes they want you to draw the circle. Sometimes we want to go backwards. And on example number four, uh, they said write the equation of the circle with the given information. Okay, now anytime you get a problem like this, start off the same way every time. What's our equation going to look like? Well, it's going to look something like this. What do we have to really fill in? We don't know what h is, we don't know what k is, and we don't know what r is. But the other parts of our equation are going to stay the same. So let's write those parts down. I know my equation is going to have something with x in it, squared. It's always got to be plus. And then we're going to have something with y in it squared. And that's going to equal some number. Okay, so write down this stuff first, and then you don't have to worry about, you know, keeping track of as many things in your head. Okay, and then next, I just want to know what number goes here, and here, and here. And those are the only three parts that we're ever going to need to fill in. All right, now they said that for number four, the center is shifted from the origin seven units to the right and three units up uh, with a radius of nine. Okay, and then it says the center was at zero, zero, now it's at seven, three. Okay, so Remember that when we plug in the coordinates of our center, our, our squared parts should come out 0. So if I stick in x is 7, because this is the x value, 7 and what give me 0? Well, 7 and negative 7 give me 0. If I stick in 3 for y, well, 3 and what give me 0? Well, negative 3. So basically, these two numbers are always just going to be the opposite of the coordinates of your new center, if the problem is given to you like this. Okay. Uh, and then uh, I said the radius is 9, so then what's going to go here? 9 squared. Now, just so we don't have to rewrite the whole thing over again, what is 9 squared? Well, 81. So then there's our equation. And it's okay that some of it's in black, some of it's in red. We can still read it. There's our equation. All right. Let's take a look at number 5. Same type of problem, except this time the center is shifted from the origin 5 units down with a radius of 3 root 5. Okay, so our old center is at 0, 0. Now it's at 0, negative 5. Okay, well, let's do what we did last time. What's definitely going to be in our equation? Well, I'm going to have something with x in it, squared. It's always got to be plus for a circle. And something with y in it, squared. And that's going to equal some number. Okay? All right, if I stick in uh, x is 0 here. 0 and what give me 0? Well, 0. So I can put... Uh, minus zero. I can put plus zero. I could have really left it blank if I wanted to. I just didn't want to have a big blank space there. Okay, we'll simplify that in a minute. Uh, next, if I plug in y is negative five, well, negative five and what give me zero? Oh, positive five. And then next, we want our radius squared here. Our radius is three root five. And we want that thing squared. Okay, so that's when we got to do a little bit of simplifying. Uh, first of all, x plus 0 is just x, so then we get x squared. So we're going to put leads to. Our equation is going to be x squared plus y plus 5 squared. That's perfect how it is. And then equals 3 root 5 squared. So remember, that means it's 3 root 5 times 3 root 5. Well, 3 times 3 gives me 9. Root 5 times root 5 gives me regular 5. And then 9 times 5, we get 45. So then this is the equation uh, of this circle. All right. Moving on, now we're going to draw a couple circles, kind of like we did before, but there's one extra piece here. Uh, you'll notice this is a little bit different because now it's not the equation of a circle, and now it's an inequality. Okay, so we got greater than here, less than or equal to here. Okay, so then how do we draw these circles? Well, it starts off the same. What's my center for number six? 
Okay, so what can I plug in to make the squared part come out zero? Well, negative three, and what squared is zero? Well, zero. Okay, so then there's my center, and then where's my radius for number six? Well, it's gonna be the square root of that number, which is seven, okay? All right, so let's see, plot our, our center at negative three, zero, so back three, up zero, that's gonna be right there. Our radius is seven. Okay, let's go up, down, left, and right, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, puts us on the edge of our graph, top and bottom, and then right seven, and left seven. Okay, we got those four points, so then do we draw a circle? Pretty much, but be careful. Uh, think back to when we were graphing a line, or a parabola, or an absolute value function, or anything else. Uh, if it's greater than versus greater than or equal to, how do I have to draw my, my line, my shape? Well, with a dotted line, right? Greater than, uh, just greater than, or just less than. It's always going to be dotted. So then this is going to be a dotted circle. So I know it's kind of hard to draw a curve that's dotted, but do your best. It should look something about like that. Okay, and then are we done with that? Not quite yet. What's the other thing we have to do whenever we're graphing inequalities? Well, we always want to shade. Do we want, you know, the shade to be our above our line or below our line? And this time, since we don't have a line, it's a circle. It's always going to be either outside of our circle or inside of our circle. Okay, well, where is this stuff going to be greater than my radius? So think of this as the, you know, the, we'll go over this in a minute too. But this is kind of like the, the distance from your center. Where is the distance from your center greater than? Well, this represents your radius. Well, that's going to be uh, outside of my circle. Okay, so greater than, we always want to shade outside the circle because it's, it's farther away. Okay, and we can't shade everywhere outside the circle, so we'll just put a little, little shaded area around the edge there. Good enough. I actually went, accidentally went over the line there. Try not to do that. All right, but greater than, we're shading outside the circle. All right, next, number seven. This one's a little bit different. Uh, here, let's scoot over so we can show our work. Where is our center going to be for number seven? Well, anytime it's a monomial, it's zero, because what squared is zero? Well, zero. And then what plus four is zero? Negative four. So our center is at zero comma negative four. And our radius is the square root of that number, so our radius is going to be five. Okay, so let's plot our center, zero, negative four. It's going to be right there. And then since our radius is five, I want to go up and down and left and right five. So up one, two, three, four, five. Down one, two, three, four, five. Uh, right one, two, three, four, five. And left five. Okay. This time, uh, our equation up here says less than or equal to. So since it's or equal to, it's going to be a, a solid curve. So we're not going to make it a dotted line this time. It's going to be solid all the way around. And our circle should look something about like that. And then this one's less than or equal to. Okay, so less than or equal to, we're always shading inside of the circle. All right, it doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to shade inside. Good enough. Okay, so that's numbers six and seven. Okay, let's go on to the second page here. All right, on the second page. Here, we want to figure out if a point is <clears throat> inside, outside, or on our circle. Okay, let's take a look at a piece of scratch paper. You don't have to write this if you don't want to because you don't really have as much space as me. Uh, I'm just using a piece of scratch paper. Uh, but let's look at this idea here for a second. Let's say I have this point on my circle. Okay, uh, think of it like this. There's basically two ways to measure that point. I can look at the distance, you know, straight from here. Or how about if I make a right triangle down here and then over here? Okay, so this really all comes back to the Pythagorean theorem. I know that this side squared plus this side squared equals this side squared. Okay, so then I just want to look at the, these, those two distances and compare them to each other. If this squared plus this squared equals this squared, in other words, think of this side squared and this side squared as uh, the distance to that point. And then this side squared 
is your distance to the edge of your circle because it's your radius. Okay, so um, if this squared plus this squared is less than this distance squared, that's going to put us somewhere in here. That's going to be inside of our circle. If this squared plus this squared is greater than uh, your radius squared, it's going to be outside your circle. And if they equal each other, then it's going to be right on your circle. Okay, now this isn't drawn to scale. Let's just plug in some numbers that we know work. How about, for example, if this side was 3, and this is 4, and this is 5. So this is one of our Pythagorean triples. It's a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. So let's see. If 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared, that means they're the same distance away from the center. And then, yeah, they're both right on the edge of the circle. And then, is that true? So 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. So we get 9 plus 16 equals 25. So then, yeah, 9 plus 16, we get 25 equals 25. So yeah, check. It works. They are equal. So then this point is right on the edge of our circle. Okay. Let's say, though, that I wanted to find the length of, of this point. We'll do this one in red. So if this is the point we're looking at, and I want to compare this distance still to my radius, because, again, my radius is on the edge of the circle. That's kind of like my, my constant. That's what I know is true. Okay, well, let's say this was, I don't know, 1 and 2, just to use whole numbers. Okay, how does that compare to this thing squared still? So if I had 1 squared plus 2 squared, and I'm comparing that, I don't know if it's you know greater than, less than, equal to, I'm just going to put a box there. How does that compare to my radius squared? Well, 1 squared is 1 plus 2 squared is 4. And then how does that compare to 25? So we get 5 and 25. Okay, well, we know uh, 5 is less than 25. So then we know now that this was less than, this was less than. Okay, so less than, so again, the distance um, from my center to my point that I'm talking about was less than my radius. Well, that means that it's going to be inside my circle. Okay, so then this part of our equation, we want to compare that to our radius squared. And that's how we're going to do these problems. Let's do one more real quick. What if I had a point out here somewhere? Okay, this is still 5. That's my radius. And then let's say this was, I don't know, 4 and 6. So this distance here and this distance here. That was not good. Uh, 6, sorry. A little sloppy there, but just bear with me. Let's scoot this over here. Well, how does 4 squared? plus 6 squared. Uh, how does that compare to my radius squared? Well, this gives me 16 plus 36. How does that compare to 25? Well, before we even finish, we can see that this is greater than. So if the left half of my equation, if the Pythagorean theorem, uh, if that stuff comes out greater than my radius squared, well, then it's you know further away than the radius can reach. It's, it's going to be outside of my circle. Okay, so hopefully that made some sense. Let's take a look now uh, at our example. Number eight. So is the point zero comma one inside, outside, or on our circle? And these are ones that you can't really do by graphing because normally they're going to place them really close to the edge where it's hard to tell if your graph was accurate enough to give an answer. So we always want to solve algebraically. And that's what it says here, justify your answer algebraically. All right, so what we want to do here is plug in this x and this y value uh, into our equation and then see how does, you know, so we want to think of this side of the equation as the distance from the center. How does that compare to uh, our radius? Okay, and again, this is our radius squared already because in our equation, this is r squared. Okay, so again, instead of x plus 2, it's something plus 2 squared plus something minus 4 squared. How does that stuff, and it's not equals, in fact, I'll put a, a box, maybe a little bit lower than I wanted to, but I started to put equal sign. How does that compare to 25? Okay, and then what are we going to stick in here and here? Well, the x and y value of our point. So then I want to stick in 0 for x and 1 for y. And then what do we get when we do that? Well, 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4, so I get 4 plus 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is positive 9. And then how does that stuff compare to 25? Well, 4 plus 9, I get 13. And 25, well, 13 is less than 25. So less than, we're thinking, you know, it's a little too short. 
uh, it is going to be inside of our circle. Okay, so that's all we're doing is plugging in the x and y values they give us and seeing how that compares to the radius squared. If it's less than its inside our circle, greater than its outside our circle, and if it's equal to, it's the same distance away from the center as the radius, well then that's going to be right on the edge of our circle. All right, number nine. Same type of problem. So again, we don't want to use x and y in our, in our equation when we're solving. It's going to be something minus 2 squared plus something minus 3 squared equals 36, which is my radius squared. Okay, so I want to solve and see uh, how does this side of my equation compare to 36. And again, sorry, not equal. It's a box. We don't know if it's equals or greater than or less than. That's what we're trying to figure out. And what goes here and here? Well, the coordinates of the point that I'm trying to see uh, whether or not it's inside, outside, or on my circle. So we want to stick in x is 5 and y is negative 4. Okay, and we want to see how this side of the equ equation compares to my radius squared. So let's see, 5 minus 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. Plus negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. Negative 7 squared is positive 49. And then how does that compare? to 36. Well, 49 plus 9, we get 58, which is greater than 36. Okay, so then the, you know, again, think of this side of my equation as the distance from the center to my point. Well, that distance is greater than the radius, which means it's further away, which means it's outside of the circle. All right. If there's any questions on that, please ask me in class. All right, now moving on to the last part of our notes here, completing the square. So this is something you saw in Math 2, um, but you, you probably don't remember it, but hopefully it's going to at least look familiar. Now, like it says here, completing a square is a process which creates a perfect square binomial. We're going to work on just a small part of the process. In other words, we're not doing all the steps. We're, we're just doing the last couple steps here. So this is already set up really nice for us. You'll see that later when it's not set up nice for us. And then we want to finish this process. I think we can zoom in here a little bit. All right, so we got x squared plus 12x equals 4. Okay, and then they also said, okay, we're going to add something to this side and add something to this side. Okay, and basically what we want to do, I don't like my equation in this form. I don't like x squared and x to the first. So what I want to do is be able to write this as something squared. Okay, so what would we have to add to both sides so that when we factor it, it I can write it as a perfect square binomial. Okay. Well, let's see. My two things that have to be the same thing uh, if they're adding up, uh, if I want to write it as something squared, those two things have to add up to 12. So what two things are the same that add up to 12? Well, 6. Right? So I want 6 twice. And then for my last term, when I'm multiplying this out, I would multiply the 6s together. So then I would get 36. Okay? But remember, if you add 36 to one side of your equation to keep it balanced, you need to add 36 to the other side. Okay, So then why does that work? Okay, Well, because if I factor this thing, let's look at that. If I factor this, I know it would factor into two binomials, equals, and then here I would just get 40. And we don't care what number ends up here. We just want to make sure it gets a, a perfect square over here. And if I'm factoring these, let's see, my signs are the same. They're both positive. Did that backwards. This tells us they're the same. This tells us they're both positive. Got to have x to get. I'm saying everything wrong. Got to have x and x to get x squared. I'm saying it all backwards. And then what multiplies to 36 and adds up to 12? Well, 6 and 6. So then how can I rewrite this expression instead of x plus 6 times x plus 6? We could just write that as x plus 6 squared. And the reason we're doing that is because if we're trying to get the equation of a circle, well, we know it needs to look like this. Something with x in it squared plus something with y in it squared. I don't want x squared plus something else with x in it. I want it to look like this. Okay. Uh, in this case, equals 40. All right. All right. And then kind of a shortcut. What went in the blank? What went in the squared part? Well, whatever number I squared uh, to get 36. Um, and then what number do I always square to get 36 or to get whatever number goes here? In other words, what goes in the blank every single time? Well, the shortcut is we, we want to take half of our middle term and square it. Okay, because I need half of this thing because I need it to add up to 12. And then I need to square it because I'm multiplying it times itself to get that number. 
So anyways, shortcut, always take half of your middle term and square it, and we can kind of skip this whole factoring step. All right, let's take a look at number 11. Okay, again, let's, let's kind of skip the whole factoring step. Let's just use the shortcut here. What am I going to add to both sides to make this side a perfect square? Well, I want to take half of this middle term and square it. Okay, you can write that two different ways. You can just say, okay, half of 8 uh, is 4, so you can put 4 squared. Or, what is 4 squared? Well, it's 16. So I could put 16 on both sides if I want to. Okay, and then when I factor that, what do I get? Well, I'm going to get x plus 4 times x plus 4, which we want to write as x plus 4 quantity squared equals whatever it works out to be on that side, which for this problem is 14. Okay. All right, and then another thing to point out, what number goes here, but whatever we squared to get that number, which was positive 4. Okay. All right, a few more to go. All right, so again, let's just use the shortcut. What's going to go here? Well, I want half of that number, which is negative 8. I'm going to write a little bit different this time. Squared. So I'm going to put negative 8 squared instead of just what it equals, which is 64. I will put 64 on the other side because here I just need to add two numbers. I don't want something squared. I just want the number. Okay, but what's the nice thing about uh, putting a negative 8 squared here instead of the 64? Well, again, what always goes in here with the x? whatever we squared to get 64. What did we square? Negative 8, not positive 8. So this one's going to be negative 8. So we get x minus 8 quantity squared uh, equals, and then add those together, we get 81. My apologies, you're going to hear a bell ring in a minute, but let's keep going on through until it rings. All right, last one uh, here. Now, another advantage to doing it this way, writing negative 8 squared instead of just 64 in both spots, is because when you get a problem like this, well, if we just put the, the number squared here, we got to deal with fractions, it gets kind of messy. Uh, if we do it like this, though, what did we square to get our number? This works out a little bit nicer. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. All right, so what's going to go here in the blank? What am I going to add to both sides? Well, I want to take half of this thing, and half of negative 5 is negative 5 over 2, and then square it. And then what is negative 5 over 2 squared? Well, if we actually square top and bottom, we just get 25 over 4. So again, on the right side, I pretty much always want the number uh, here. What did I square to get that number, though? And again, the nice thing about writing it this way is that I know this is going to end up as something with x in it squared. And then, well, what did I square to get 25 over 4? Well, it's right there negative 5 over 2. And that is how we want it written, too. Okay, And then equals 3 fourths plus 25 fourths. At least it already has a common denominator. That's nice. We get 28 over 4, which we can simplify that. We get x minus 5 over 2 squared equals 7. Okay, So again, uh, a second advantage to writing it you know, this way, as the number squared instead of just the, the total, is when you have odd numbers. Um, you know, rather than just have this 25 over 4 and then have to factor this thing, which would be x squared minus 5x plus 25 over 4, that wouldn't be fun to factor to figure out what goes here. Well, I know it goes here. It's just whatever number I squared. So that's why it's a good idea sometimes to write it this way instead of just putting, you know, the actual squared number on both sides. But that's up to you. Depends on which way you want to do it. All right, and then the last problem. It says rewrite the following that, so that it looks like this by completing the square. So basically, we just want to complete the square. The only difference here is uh, they didn't do a couple steps for us. Okay, the other ones up, up above, um, they did two things. They got the x squared and the x part by themselves. Uh, they also left the, the gap in there for us. Okay, so we got to do that stuff on our own. Okay, so that's not hard to do. When we're completing the square, the first step is to get rid of any other coefficients you have. So let's get these parts by themselves by adding 11 to both sides. And then that's going to give us x squared plus 6x, and leave a gap, equals 11. Okay, so why did we leave a gap? Well, because I know to complete the square, i got to add something 
to my left side of my equation. And if I'm going to add something to the left side, I need to make sure I add the same thing to the right side so that my equation stays balanced. Okay? And then what's going to go in the blank? Well, half of this number squared, half of 6 is 3. So I'm going to add 3 squared to both sides, which is 9. Okay, and again, why did I write it this way? Well, now because what's going to go in here in the squared part with the x? Well, what did I square to get 9? Well, positive 3. And then what do we get on the other side of the equation? Well, 20. Okay, so then here's my equation. So I know this isn't a circle because there's no y part in there, but we'll get to that later, just kind of easing you into completing the square. All right, if you have any questions, please let me know in class.